Hey guys, what I have for you today are the 10 C's of survival. Now the 10 C's of survival have been made very popular in the bushcraft and survival community as a methodology for teaching basic survival in the wilderness. The reason so is that a lot of these items are hard to recreate in the wild um, and a lot of them are also very complementary, redundant with each other and multifunctional pieces of kit, relatively inexpensive that make for a great kit in the wild. So let me go down the list real quick and I'll show you my 10 C's of survival. The first C is going to be that cutting implement. Probably one of the most important, if not the most important items in the 10 C's. What I have here is the Mora Bushcraft Black. Scandi grind knife, great for wood processing. Carbon steel blade. It's a fixed knife. The tang does not go all the way down. It's not a full tang knife. It's a rat tail tang. It stops right about here in the handle. The handle itself is rubber, which makes for a great grip in the event that I have poor dexterity because it's a cold environment or it's wet out. And then it has a 90 degree spine on the back, which is perfect for striking uh, a ferro rod to get sparks as a primary means to start fire. The fact that it's also carbon steel means that I can use this as a secondary method for starting fires by taking a piece of shirt or flint and striking the back of the knife to throw sparks onto super fine tinder material like uh, char cloth or charred punk wood to use as a means to start fire in conjunction with tinder. So that's the first C. The second C is going to be a combustion device, which is my ferro rod. This is a six inch by half inch combustion uh, device ferro rod with a lanyard on the end and then duct tape uh, around the head for a grasp. Great for also again. If I have uh, poor dexterity because it's cold out, I can grasp this whole thing and still use enough of the surface area to get that, uh, those sparks off and get the material off the ferro rod to ignite tinder. And so this is going to be my combustion device. I'm very confident that I can get tinder together and start a fire with this uh, in just about any situation. Next is going to be my cordage. The cordage I'm going to go with is number 36 bank line, very popular as well. And I wasn't a believer until I attended the course and found out the uh, variety of uses for the uh, uh, bank line. I was a big believer in 550 core for a long time, uh, just because I've been in the military and seen it work for so long. But the bank line itself is going to be great, great for lashing, can be broken down into smaller materials to use for repairing kit or for medical device like external sutures. You can use it for traps, and this is just a fire and forget uh, cordage. Uh, weapon in my opinion that's going to go in my kit that I'm going to carry every time. Next is a cover element. What I've chosen is the poncho, uh, GI poncho. Very versatile piece of kit. I can wear it as a uh, rain cover, uh, rain jacket. I can use it as a hooch or a shelter device. I can use it as a ground tarp. I can use it to collect materials. I can use it to collect water. Um, I can use it as an improvised litter in the event I need to evacuate a casualty. I can use it as a suspended bed as part of a suspended shelter uh, to sleep on. There's just a lot of material. There's a lot of uh, uses and multifunctionality within a poncho. Um, I keep it rolled up. If you haven't seen my poncho video, go check it out. Uh, but inside, I also have a quick deploy ridge line to set up a hooch out in the woods uh, very quickly with this. So the poncho is going to be what I choose for a cover element. The fifth item is going to be that container. Uh, the container being a single walled stainless steel container that you can place into a fire and boil water. You can also take this container and put charcoal material in here like 100% cotton or punk wood into the container itself once it's dry and then put the cup over top, put this into the fire, superheat that material, turn it into a char material to start fires later. I like the fact that also once this is boiled and purified and cools off, I can put the cap on and transport the water with me to my next camp in a survival situation. Those are the first five. The second five, completing the ten. The number six item is going to be a candling device or a headlamp. The headlamp obviously being important because it's hands-free, so you can see what you're doing during hours of limited visibility. The one I have on me is the Black Diamond 300. I like it because it has several different functions with white. It also has a red lens function and um, several different functions for the white lens itself. But the one thing I really like about this headlamp is that it has a strobe function on it. So it can be a passive means for signal in hours of limited visibility in the event I need to signal for rescue and rescuer that inbound. I can place this at a point of elevation or on my head somewhere where uh, rescuers can see it and then they come into my position. So this is what I'm going to carry uh, with me as well.
Next, I'm gonna have cargo tape or Gorilla Tape is what I carry. I've used the T-Rex stuff, it's great, um, very strong, but uh, I like the subdued color of the Gorilla Tape um, and it's worked and you know, if it's not broken, I'll fix it. Now if T-Rex Tape uh, was, you know, black or green, um, I'd probably use that stuff uh, more than I use Gorilla Tape. But uh, what can't you do with Gorilla Tape? Medical treatment, you can use it for repairing equipment, you can use it for um, flame extender, uh, what can't you use duct tape for? You're only limited by your creativity and your imagination. So I'm going to keep some of that in my kit. Next is the compass device. What I like about the compass device, uh, this is a popular one, the MC2 from Sunto. It has a obviously a compass for directional aid and land navigation, but it has the uh, sighting and mirror, mirror in here that doubles as a signal mirror uh, for rescue, and then it also has the um, the uh, magnifying lens in here to ignite uh, super fine tinder such as char cloth or char material um, to uh, act as a multifunctional tool to get another fire going which is why uh, obviously having a compass not only is a directional aid uh, but this can also signal for help and help in creating fire so it's multifunctional in and of itself I also keep pacing beads in here to uh, count distance as I travel and then I decided why not put a whistle on top uh, of that as well. It just makes sense to have a whistle or some sort of noise making device with a directional aid in the event of trying to find my way out of somewhere where I'm stuck. Okay, so that's the compass. The ninth item is going to be cotton. Now, I decided to go with a double uh, XL orange 100% cotton t shirt because of the multifunctionality of this t shirt. I can wear it and have it as an extra layer as well as a signaling device that I wear and I'm walking around as a walking signal. I can use it as a signaling device up into a point of elevation around a flag. This is 100% cotton so I can use it in conjunction with my container as char material. I can also use this to gather materials. I can use it as a water filter. I can use it as a uh, medical device for a pressure dressing, splinting a fracture, uh, treating a laceration, creating an improvised tourniquet, another video of mine, go check it out. And the uh, uses of this are limitless, okay? So uh, plenty of uses for this cotton material. There's a ton of it here being 2XL, um, so I can use it for a variety of purposes and still have enough left over for other means as well. So I'm going to keep this as part of my kit for the cotton material. And then the 10th and last item, uh, like every good bushcrafter and survivalist, is going to have that uh, 14 gauge uh, sail needle uh, taped to the back of their sheath. You can use this primarily with broken down fibers from the cordage as uh, repair uh, materials for uh, your gear or your clothing. Uh, you can also use this for uh, hygiene products like getting splinters out of your skin. You can also take this and take your knife. The knife tip has a negative polarity. You can stroke uh, one end of the needle itself and create an improvised uh, compass with that and you can suspend it with a broken down piece of fiber to give you a north-south running line in the event you can't find uh, cardinal directions for whatever reason. Uh, but that's going to stay taped to the back of my knife, obviously multifunctional in and of itself with a variety of uses. You can also use it as an improvised tool like a reamer or an awl. Okay guys, so the 10 C's right here, which is the brief explanation of what a lot of these items offer. Obviously very hard to recreate in the wild, but the 10 C's is what's going to be the core of my kit. I hope it's the core of your kit. If you didn't know, now you do. Uh, but uh, you're going to see these items come up again and again in my kit um, as just the center of it. Obviously you can take some of these away and put different items in their place depending on the situation, the environment, the temperature, the season. Uh, but this is the 10 C's are going to remain consistent across the board. Just some of the items may differ uh, here and there. But that's all tailored to your situation, the environment you're in, uh, compared to the environment I'm in, and then what's good for me and what's good for you. So, 10 C's of survival. I hope you guys like this video. I want to say thanks for all the likes, all the subscriptions, uh, for the views, and then for the comments and shares, everything you do for the channel and for me. I really appreciate it. But I'll be back with another video just as soon as I can. Okay, guys? Thanks.